can't hear you, you have the same sound engineer we have down in the courtrooms. <laughs> we didn't have that problem in the old courthouse. How about now? I'll sit down and so I can use this mic. Um, historically, there are a few things that some of you may know, not know about the courthouse. It was designed by Frank Milton. Um, construction actually began in 1904 and was completed in 1905. And quickly, um, halfway through the year, on July 17th, the county held its first murder trial there. Um, it started off with a bang um, and has been running strong ever since. It completed the last murder trial shortly before the courts actually moved into the judicial complex when it was finished. The structure has received several facelifts over the years. Part of our committee members have been a part of that process and some of you have been a part of that process. Uh, and the courthouse is on the National Registry of Historic Places and that designation was made in 1980. There are several considerations. Right now there's only a $2 million budget. Um, how that money is spent initially, whether it all goes um, the majority of it towards maintenance or towards renovation is something that will be a part of the committee's recommendation and something that we hope you all will all have some insight on. Um, the historical character of the building is important. Um, there is a lot of maintenance that needs to be done. There are 20-something units, air conditioning units, all over the building. Okay. Um, so that's a problem, um, possibly as far as the HVAC goes. The marble needs some work. There's several places where it's broken or it's loose, which is one of the reasons we can't let the public in right now. The steps just aren't safe. Um, we've got windows that need to be replaced and the general cleaning. Whenever we tore the annex off, there was just enough money to complete that project, but the entire courthouse has not been cleaned after that work was done. However, it is being maintained. There is enough heating in the air there um, to keep mold from growing. There are still records being stored there. There are three floors um, and put in the basement on the first floor. Uh, at that house, the magistrate court, the state court, and the probate court, there's about 6,500 square feet of usable space there. So that is a large consideration as far as the future use goes. When you get to the second floor, as Judge McLean stated, um, that's the courtroom um, that's to remain functional. On the third floor, there's a partial floor with some office space that's um, about 2,300 square feet heated. And then in the basement, there's some partial climate control and 3,800 square feet there. One thing about the basement, if any of you have ever been in the basement, um, it's not changed. Um, there's been problems in the past with it flooding. It is low. Um, it's just, it's brick and it's rock and some of the floor in there is dirt. So there's a tremendous amount of work that would need to be done, not only to finish out that area, but to get it to a place where um, things could go on there or it could be stored there without you having to worry about <coughs> to that renovation. There are current uses, even though there's no one housed in the building. As the judge said, um, you know, the second floor for large trials, and we have used that courtroom since the judicial building opened. We had a, an uh, air conditioning problem at the jail and had to move the court there. There are still being records stored. The courts still have records that are being stored in the historical courthouse. Then there are a lot of events that we all enjoy throughout the year to include this list, farm days, brown bag concert search series, um, holiday festivals, political rallies, some of these things come up only a week or so before they need to be held. So I think Amanda, you know how quickly there's been some things you, you all have pulled off there we've worked on when someone has called and said, hey, I'm coming through town and need to use your courthouse square. So whatever goes into the building is going to need to be compatible with the flexibility of those grounds still being the quality of life location that our community has known that to be. That's also part of the historical aspect of the courthouse. Uh, in the early days when there was still you know, a porch on one side, the election results were hollered from the courthouse and everyone would come to town and have picnics on the grounds and it was you know, a day of it for everyone. So there's um, a lot to be preserved as far as the grounds go. And so then the process, which I think the chairman and the judge have both touched on, um, we're here to gather public input. If there's someone that's you know interested in providing some information, they can't make one of these meetings. They can certainly submit that to us. Um, the committee's also going to take what is presented and do some research. They're going to consolidate those findings, and then they're going to present a recommendation to the board of commissioners. So for today.
today. Um, presenters will be heard in the order in which they signed in. I know that some of you signed in and maybe you don't want to speak and that's okay. We want to keep everyone in the loop if you attended and you'd like to receive additional information. So I'll just kind of go through the list and if you'd like to pass, you say pass and we'll move to the next person. Um, we've gone over the additional information and please know that all the presentations or the information submitted is subject to the Open Records Act. So this is not something that you can call us tomorrow and say, hey, I got a secret. Um, there is a transparent process here and we have to make sure that everything remains a part of public record. So does anyone have any questions before we get started? Okay. okay. 